What is conceptual art? Conceptual art had existed in various forms for decades. But solidified into a major movement in the 1960s and 1970s. Inspired greatly by Dada and the art of Marcel Duchamp. Conceptual art is concerned with the intellectual process of art. The artist Sol Lewitt's 1967 article, Paragraphs on Conceptual Art, did much to explain the foundations of the movement, an idea alone can be a work of art. Conceptual art is extremely diverse and a large number of international artists are associated with it. Conceptual art can be anything from written documents to photographs, videos to performances. The work of Belgian artist Marcel Brutheers, 1924-1976, is a good example of conceptual art. Brutheers was a writer, filmmaker, and visual artist. Perhaps his most celebrated piece. Musée d'art moderne, Département de Eagles, Museum of Modern Art, Department of Eagles, 1968. Was an installation at his home in Brussels that described a completely fictitious museum. Besides the fact that Brutheers created posters, descriptions, and signs the museum did not exist. The central idea of this piece was to question the authority of the museum as an institution. Conceptual art continues to be a major part of contemporary art today. What is minimalism? Minimalism is a term that describes simple, geometric art that is often impersonal and made with a new set of materials. Including aluminum, plexiglass, plywood, and steel. Minimalist artists attempted to distill their work into a pure form. Editing any reference to personality, feelings, symbolism, or story. The style became popular during the mid-1960s, though many art critics at the time accused minimalism of being too cold. And questioned whether art could, or should, be produced by industrial means. The term minimalism has been used to describe the art of many artists. From Ad Reinhardt to Eve Klein, Frank Stella to Robert Rauschenberg. The work of artist Donald Judd, 1928-1994, is a good example of minimalism. Judd explored the difference between painting and sculpture with his series of wall structures. Judd's wall structures are composed of a series of machinemata rectangular forms that protrude from the wall. Forms that he called specific objects. The work of artist Ann Truitt, 1921 to 2004, occasionally blurred the line between minimalism and color field painting. However, her minimalist sculpture Grant 1963, a long wooden beam painted in acrylic was a pure, impersonal, geometric form. Is graffiti considered art? From a postmodern perspective, graffiti is as legitimate a form of visual expression as any form of fine art. 
therefore an oil painting is no more valid than graffiti and both are considered art. Graffiti, which is often associated with vandalism and the illicit painting or marking of public spaces, has been part of painting for decades, if not longer. Artists such as Jackson Pollock and Jean Dubuffet, for example, incorporated graffiti like markings into their work. In 1983, the first exhibition of graffiti art was held at Boymans van Buningen. Museum in Denmark a sign that graffiti was being accepted as a fine art. The artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, 1960-1988, began his career in the late 1970s as a graffiti artist. Tagging buildings with short, poetic phrases, along with this friend, Al Diaz. The duo signed their work as Samo, same old shit. In the 1980s, Basquiat developed a neo-expressionist style that incorporated graffiti elements. Explored experimental music, and exhibited his work in galleries in New York City and Los Angeles. Another artist, Keith Haring, 1958-1990, also began his career by using chalk and magic. Markers to draw his dynamic cartoon images in public spaces, such as New York metro stations. Both Bosquiat and Herring have achieved even greater success since their premature deaths. Bosquiat of a heroin overdose and Herring of AIDS. As graffiti art and street art have received increasing mainstream attention. Who is Jeff Koons? Jeff Koons, 1955, is a controversial, highly successful contemporary artist known for monumental, brightly colored sculpture and art produced by large teams of assistants. A former commodities broker who trained at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and the Maryland Institute College of Art, Koons creates art that critiques commercialism. For example, he displayed vacuum cleaners in clear, perspex boxes, in a series called The New. 1979, and later began making enormous, highly polished balloon animal sculptures that were praised for their technical virtuosity, and criticized for their over-the-top decadence. Koons is also famous for his large topiary sculpture, Puppy, 1992, and his Rococo-esque sculpture. Michael Jackson and Bubbles, 1988, a golden, ceramic sculpture of the King of Pop with his pet monkey. Koons' art is polarizing because it blurs the line between high art and spectacle. Which some say is exactly the point. What is performance art? Performance art is slightly more complicated than its name might suggest. Performance art is indeed art that blends music, theatrical performance, and visual art, rather than a single painting or sculpture. But, the form itself, which became more popular in the 1960s, also blurs the line between art and artist, and frequently produces an uncomfortable reaction amongst viewers. For example, 
the artists Gilbert and George sing for over eight hours in their performance. The Singing Sculpture, 1969 In a performance piece titled How to Explain Pictures to a Dead Hare, 1968 the often provocative artist Joseph Buies holds a dead hare in his arms while appearing to whisper to it. A good example of the way in which both art and artist merge is Yoko Ono's 1964 performance. Cut piece, in which audience participants are invited to cut off pieces of Ono's clothing until none remain. This performance is also categorized as an example of Fluxus art. What is digital art? Digital art is art made by using digital technologies, such as a computer. Digital art is now more commonly referred to as new media art and can include two-dimensional images. Whether printed or not, made with software programs such as Adobe Photoshop, for example. Three-dimensional works, or even multimedia works such as animations or videos made using computer software. Who is Jenny Halzer? Jenny Halzer, 1950, is a conceptual artist known for text-based installations and public displays. Her earliest work was Truisms, 1977-1979, which consisted of anonymous posters hung up around New York City with one-line phrases such as protect me from what I want. Abuse of power comes as no surprise, and expiring for love is beautiful but stupid. Along with displaying these truisms on posters. Halzer carved words into public benches, created t-shirts, hats, and more. Later in her career, she began to work with LED, light-emitting diode displays, which has garnered her much critical and popular success. For example, she created a 65-foot wide permanent LED display in the lobby of 7 World Trade Center in which text slowly scrolls. Halzer writes many of her own texts, and during her later career she began to appropriate language from international poets as well as text from unclassified U.S. documents, including interrogation transcripts from Abu Ghraib in Iraq. In this case, Halzer projects private words in a public space. Emphasizing the difference between private and public communication. What is installation art? Installation art is art that is more than three dimensional, it creates a complete environment. Entire gallery spaces can be devoted to a single installation, usually but not always temporarily. Installation art became popular in the 1970s and continues to be an important art form today. Installations rely upon the interactions of the viewer slash participant and can even be collected. Which means they are not necessarily site-specific.
Yves Klein created one of the first installations with his work The Void in 1958. For this work, Klein presented a completely empty, white-walled gallery. Other famous examples of installation art include British sculptor Rachel Whitehead's Embankment. 2005, which she created for the Turbine Hall at the Tate Modern Museum in London. The piece consisted of tower-like mountains made of thousands of white, plaster casts of boxes. Visitors to the gallery were able to move through the installation allowing them to engage with a monumental art form on an intimate level. What is OP art? The op-in-op op art refers to optical illusion and op art paintings. Such as Bridget Riley's Metamorphosis, 1964, are composed of precise, geometric abstractions. Op art paintings pulse with an energy created by a strategic alignment of color and form. Creating a blurring after image. Similar to the experience of looking at a bright light for too long, or looking into a funhouse mirror. Hungarian artist Viktor Vazerilai, 1908-1997, was a pioneer of op art. His commercial paintings of zebras, and their repetitious black and white stripes. Served as early optic experimentations while works such as the Black and White Supernovae, 1959-1961, are dynamic and restless. Vazerilai linked these works to free-moving kinetic art by artists such as Alexander Calder. The viewer is an essential part of the op art experience because without the viewer specifically the viewer's perception, there can be no optical illusion. Op art serves as an inquiry into the very nature of optical perception the experience of seeing things. What was the Ashken School? The Ashken School was a loosely affiliated group of American realist artists made up of some members of the eight. Including Robert Henry, William Glackens, George Lux, Everett Chin, and John Sloan. The painter George Bellows, 1882-1925, is also associated with the Ashken School. Like the Impressionists, the artists of the Askin School were interested in scenes of everyday American life. Though they tended towards darker themes. Paintings such as John Sloan's Election Night, 1907, and George Bellows' Clip Dwellers, 1913. Feature bold colors and seemingly spontaneous energy as large groups of people fill the frame. The Ashken School is considered the first modern American art movement. What does the Farm Security Administration have to do with art? In 1935, the Farm Security Administration, FSA, was established in order to document and communicate the devastating impact of the Great Depression, especially on farm workers and the rural poor. American economist Roy Stryker hired a team of photographers. 
that included Walker Evans and Dorothea Lang, among others. Walker Evans, 1903-1975, had studied literature in Paris and was direct in his approach to photography. His work powerfully documents struggling families. Notably in West Virginia, during the period between World Wars I and II. Dorothea Lang, 1895-1965, had a photography studio in San Francisco, but when hired by Roy Stryker. She traveled to see firsthand what migrant farm workers had to endure. Her photographs, including Migrant Mother, 1936, Migratory Cotton Picker, 1940. And wife of a migratory farmer in her makeshift tent home, are eloquent and forceful. Who was Eva Hesse? Eva Hesse, 1936 to 1970 was a German-American painter and sculptor whose Jewish family dramatically escaped Nazi Germany. Her highly experimental art is usually categorized as minimalist, however. Unlike many minimalists, narrative and personal history are an important part of her work. Her installation sculpture Rope Piece, 1969-1970, a tangled, slightly frightening web of rope string and wire has a different form each time it is moved to a new location the piece has been described as a drawing in space her work accession to 1968 to 1969 now at the detroit institute of art is a cube made of vinyl and steel the cube is open at the top, revealing a lush layer of fiber-like tubes a reaction against the severity of much minimalist art. What is American regionalism? While some American artists and critics were enamored with European modernism, others like Edward Hopper, 1882 to 1967, Grant Wood, 1892 to 1942, and Thomas Hart Benton, 1889 to 1975, turned inward and examined American life during the 1930s and 1940s. The quiet, lonely paintings of Hopper, such as his famous Nighthawks, 1942. A painting that depicts a brightly lit, if empty, restaurant interior on a dark night, evoke a sense of isolation. Iowa-born artist Grant Wood studied in Paris where he was exposed to the realism of the Northern Renaissance. A realism that he infused into his now iconic painting, American Gothic, 1930. Which depicts a farmer couple, actually modeled by the artist's sister and a local dentist, who stand in front of their clabbered home. Exaggerated to have the look of a Gothic cathedral with long, pointed windows. Wood's painting glorifies the hard working, American farmer. Thomas Hart Benton also memorialized the American worker in his series of murals. For the new school of social research in New York City, called America Today. American regionalism provided a comfortable depiction of America's 
Heartland after the challenges of the Great Depression and World War II. Essentially a realist style, though also occasionally political. It fell out of favor as European-inspired modernism dominated the American art scene during the 1940s. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is a difficult to describe, anti-art movement, sometimes called Neo-Dada. Promoted informally by an international group of artists who were interested in the relationship between art and life. The term Fluxus was invented in 1961 by the Lithuanian-American artist George Maciunas. The word itself comes from Latin and means to flow. Artists associated with Fluxus include, among others, Joseph Buys, 1921-1986, George Brecht, 1926-2008. Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, Yoko Ono, 1933, and Lamont Young, 1935. An experimental composer and performance artist. The artist Dick Higgins, 1938-1998, created a rubber stamp upon which he explained Fluxus as a way of doing things. A tradition, and a way of life and death, as quoted in Dempsey 229. Fluxus art was inherently collaborative. Artists worked together to create pieces by sending art through the mail, for example. Collaborative Fluxus festivals or flux concerts featured experimental music and other types of short. Fast-paced performances. Fluxus defies narrow. Description. It was intended to 244 be open, simple, and have a sense of humor. What is precisionism? Precisionism, a term coined by American modernist artist Charles Sheeler. 1883-1965, is sometimes also called Cubist Realism. The movement began in the 1920s and was an early American modernist movement. Characterized by geometric simplification and broad areas of flat, hard-edged color. Precisionist paintings often depict abstract architectural or industrial scenes. The precisionist work of Charles Sheeler, such as Church Street L. 1920, are clearly influenced by the artist's experience as a photographer, and emphasize the man-made world. Other artists associated with precisionism are Charles de Muth, 1883 to 1935 and Georgia O'Keeffe 1887 to 1986 whose works Radiator Building Night 1927 and City Night 1926 are good examples of the style What was the Armory Show In 1913, the Armory Show introduced America to European modernism. The Armory Show was actually called the International Exhibition of Modern Art, which was held at the 69th Regiment Armory in New York City. 
it was organized by the Association of American Painters and Sculptors and displayed a range of styles. From American Realism to Impressionism to European Modernism Although European Modernism made up a small portion of the art in the exhibition, it made shockwaves among American viewers and critics. The Fave works by Matisse, and the Cubism of Picasso and Brock were highly criticized. Marcel Duchamp's nude descending the staircase was deemed to look like a pile of twigs. Despite this sensational backlash, which attracted thousands of visitors to both the New York and the additional Chicago location, the Armory Show made an unprecedented impact on American avant-garde artists and collectors. Marking the beginning of modernism's dominance of the American art scene throughout much of the 20th century. What is sound art? Also known as audio art, sound art developed in the late 1970s. Though artists and musicians had been experimenting with sound and electronic music for decades prior. Sound art, like video art, is a medium rather than a style. And features many different types of sounds from natural to man-made. The Italian artist Luigi Russolo, 1883-1947, wrote a manifesto titled The Art of Noises in 1913. Using new musical instruments as well as music comprised of noise sounds. Also in 1913, Dada artist Marcel Duchamp created the Aratum musical and later. Eve Klein wrote the Monotone Symphony, 1947, which was composed of only one note. There are a number of sound artists, and visual artists who incorporate sound, working today. Including the British artist Brian Eno, 1948, who collaborated with the artist Peter Schmidt. To create an artwork called Oblique Strategies, over 100 worthwhile dilemmas, 1975. Oblique Strategies is a set of cards designed to assist in solving difficult dilemmas that arise during life and creative work, such as writing a musical composition. Sound art is still in its infancy. And new audio and digital technology continues to develop and impact the medium. What is video art? While artists such as Andy Warhol had experimented with film and video recordings. Video art was born in 1965 when Fluxus artist Nam June Paik filmed the streets of New York City with his brand new Sony portable video camera and showed the videos mere hours later at a cafe. Video art, which is a medium, not a style, in the way that oil painting is a medium. Represents a transition from mass media influence to television influence. Video art can take many forms, from use in sculpture and installations. To performances and videos can be broadcast live or recorded and displayed in various settings. In 1996, Douglas Gordon won the British Turner Prize for his video work 24 Hour Psycho, 
1996. Contemporary video artists include Bill Viola, 1951, Matthew Barney, 1967. Creator of the Cree Master film series, and Canadian Stan Douglas, 1960, among many others. Who is Cindy Sherman? Cindy Sherman, 1954, is a postmodern photographer known for her conceptual manipulations of media images and her use of self-portraiture. Sherman's photographs explore feminine identity and question the way women are portrayed in art and popular culture. In her series untitled film stills, from the late 1970s and early 1980s. Sherman takes on the role of a female icon, a blonde bombshell such as Marilyn Monroe, and other stereotypical cliches. Her characters range from self-aware to subdued to comical. Her later work takes on art history. In Untitled No. 224, Sherman becomes Bacchus, the ancient god of wine as imagined in the work of Baroque artist Caravaggio. Her eyes peering out from under a crown of grape leaves. Through her work, Cindy Sherman becomes the composite of the many images and film references she makes. Leading the viewer to question the reality or artificiality of not only the artist's identity, but of the way in which subjects are portrayed in art and popular culture. What is body art? In body art, the artist's body becomes the medium. Body art overlaps with many other forms and styles, such as performance art. It became popular during the 1960s, likely as a reaction against the cold austerity of minimalism. Examples of body art include Bruce Naumann's photograph, self-portrait as a fountain, 1966 to 1967 in which the artist's body takes on the characteristics of a fountain as water squirts from his mouth an example of conceptual body art is piero manzoni's living sculpture 1961 in which the artist signed the bodies of living women What was the Harlem Renaissance? The Harlem Renaissance was a cultural movement that grew from the 19th century New Negro movement. Intellectuals such as Alain Locke, 1886 to 1954, called on black artists, writers, musicians and thinkers to draw inspiration from their African roots rather than white European traditions. Blues and jazz, played by musicians such as Bessie Smith and Duke Ellington, and poetry by writers such as Langston Hughes, were part of a cultural explosion that centered on the New York City urban experience. Visual artists, including the photographer James Van Der Zee, and painters Palmer Hayden. 1890 to 1964, and Aaron Douglas, whose painting Aspects of Negro Life, From Slavery Through Reconstruction, 1934, 
is an example of the influence of African art styles on black artists during the Harlem Renaissance. The painting represents the history of black Americans and is populated with figurative silhouettes reminiscent of ancient Egyptian paintings. With a limited color palette, Douglas' painting is filled with energy, movement, and sound in its depiction of the Emancipation Proclamation, Civil War Reconstruction, and voting rights. At the far left of the scene, the Ku Klux Klan threaten on horseback. But repeating circles draw attention to a triumphant figure at the center, who holds a ballot in his hand. What is post painterly abstraction? The term post painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909-1994, to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction, including, but not limited to, hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly. 1923, is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post painterly abstraction. Post painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg. Who was Joseph Cornell? Joseph Cornell, 1903-1972, was a self-taught American artist and filmmaker from New York, who experimented with surrealist collage and assemblage, and is most celebrated for his shadow. Boxes filled with meticulously curated objets trouvés, found objects, which exhibit the artist's eclectic and intellectual interests from astronomy to arcades, from ballet to film. Cornell exhibited his work at the surrealist Julian Levy Gallery, bringing distinction to the art of assemblage. Cornell's boxes have been interpreted as constructivist and have also been likened to visual poems, filled with surprising, often playful objects. For example, Homage to the Romantic Ballet 1942, holds six frosted glass cubes on a reflective plate above a blue, velvet surface. On the inside of the lid is an inscription a lyrical telling of a carriage ride on a moonlit night. Another piece, untitled, Hotel Eden, 1945, 
features a cutout of a tropical bird. Whitewashed wood, and paint splattered newsprint, which creates a nostalgic image of paradise. Many of Cornell's assemblages are on display at the Art Institute of Chicago. What is Internet art? Artists continually mine new technologies for possible artistic media. From acrylic paints to plastics, electronics to the World Wide Web. Internet art, or, net art, is a newly emerging form of digital art and can be interactive, collaborative, and accessible. Internet art is unique amongst art forms for its ability to reach a global audience in the click of a button. In 1995, the website Adaib was created as an online gallery hosting virtual art installations by established artists such as Felix Gonzalez Torres. 1957 to 1996, and Jenny Halzer, 1950, who exhibited her truisms on Adaib. Another example of net art includes Russian artist Olya Yelena's interactive piece. My boyfriend came back from the war, 1996, which tells a story by allowing site visitors to Click on different hypertext links and GIFs, digital images in graphics interchange format. Internet art continues to expand, with many museums and galleries launching art websites. And new digital artists who explore the medium. Who was Georgia O'Keeffe? Although Georgia O'Keeffe, 1887-1986, is quite popular for her large, highly detailed paintings of flowers, throughout her career she painted a range of subjects from New York City skyscrapers to dessert scenes, cow skulls, and adobe architecture. O'Keefe was a modernist painter whose work was highly distilled and so precise it could border on the abstract. Georgia O'Keefe's first solo show was in 1917 at the 921 Gallery. Run by photographer and collector Alfred Stieglitz, who she later married. After his death in 1946, O'Keefe permanently relocated to New Mexico, where she was interested in the sun's effect on the visual quality of objects and lived an isolated life. Her work oscillates between realism and abstraction and her powerful images have brought her celebrity status as an artist. Who are the young British artists? The young British artists, YBAs, are a loosely affiliated group of contemporary artists working in London. Many of whom trained at London's Goldsmiths College in the late 1980s. Many of the young British artists gained the support of wealthy patrons. Such as advertising magnate and art collector Charles Saatchi. The young British artists included Damien Hirst. 1965, 
who curated a show of YBA work at a warehouse in 1988, putting the group on the map. Other members, such as Gary Hume and Fiona Ray, exhibited in this early show. While others Rachel Whiteread, 1963, and Tracy Emin, c. 1963, did not, but are also considered YBAs. The work of these artists is very diverse. Gary Hume and Fiona Ray are primarily painters. While White Reed and Emin are known for their conceptual sculpture and installations. What are earthworks? Earthworks, also known as land art, are works of art made of natural materials such as earth. Rocks, water usually on an extremely large scale. Land art became popular in the 1960s. Earthworks have been linked to minimalism due to their inherent simplicity. And some scholars have called this form a reaction against consumerism because it is nearly impossible for anyone to buy or sell, or exhibit, land art. The most famous example of an earthwork is Spiral Jetty. Built on Rosal Point in the Great Salt Lake in Utah in 1970 by artist Robert Smithson. Spiral Jetty is monumental indeed a 1,500 foot long embankment made of earth mud, and basalt rocks that juts into the lake. Periodically submerged due to the changing levels of the lake. Earthworks such as Spiral Jetty are built on such a large scale that they evoke the mystery. And largest of ancient monuments and sites such as Cahokia or Serpent Mound. Other examples of earthworks are Michael Heiser's Double Negative, 1969-70, which was created by cutting the sides of a canyon wall in the Arizona desert, as well as Walter de Maria's Lightning Field, 1977. Why did Alexander Calder make mobiles? American artist Alexander Calder, 1898-1976, was interested in sculpture that moved. Also known as kinetic sculpture. Trained as an engineer and an artist, Calder was intrigued by Pete Mondrian's experimentations of color and form. And himself created moving Mondrian's free hanging. Mobile sculptures engaged in constant physical change. Not only do Calder's works of art move, but the viewer may move around the art. Allowing for ever-changing dynamic viewpoints. Calder's mobile one of those. 1972, is composed of abstract biomorphic forms that suggest organic, lively objects. Calder made more than mobiles, other sculptural works include the 50-ton arched steel flamingo in Chicago. 1973, and the curving, fin-studded whale too. Constructed of wood and steel in 1964 after the 1937 original, housed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York.
What are some examples of postmodern art? Many postmodern art movements are described as neo movements. Because they respond to earlier modern styles or approaches. Here is a sampling. Neo expressionism. Neo expressionism is primarily focused on painting. Though 252, some sculpture is considered neo expressionist and first began in Germany in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Neo-expressionist paintings are usually vibrant, sometimes figurative, but often raw and self-aware. Neo-expressionist artists include Anselm Kiefer, 1945, from Germany, and the American Julian Schnabel. 1951, whose large, Brash paintings have been highly financially successful. Neo Geo Neo Geometric Conceptualism, or Neo Geo, developed in New York City in the mid 1980s and is characterized by postmodern appropriation and a strong sense of irony. Artists associated with Neo Geo include Peter Halley, 1953, and Ross Blecker. 1949, who brought new symbolic meaning to familiar modernist forms. Artists such as Ashley Bickerton. 1959, and Jeff Koons, 1955, are Neo Geo artists more interested in consumer culture. And their art is sometimes also categorized as post pop. Neopop Neopop is another term for post-pop. An art movement that developed under the influence of pop art in the 1980s. Neopop artists include Heim Steinbach, 1944, Alan McCollum, 1949. Jeff Koons, 1955, Ashley Bickerton, 1959, and Takashi Murakami, 1961. Neopop artists frequently use pre-existing, everyday objects. Also known as ready-mades, in their work and question the values of mainstream culture. Who was Nam June Paik? Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, was a Korean-American artist who worked in many different media. Creating videotapes, paintings, sculptures, robots, laser installations, and writing. He is best known as an innovator in video art. Paik joined Fluxus while studying in Germany and was later inspired by the experimental composer and artist John Cage, who he met and befriended in 1958. Paik used the video as a structural component in his sculptures and installations. For example, he made a cello by stacking television sets and stringing them together with cello strings. He also made a bra out of two television screens in a work titled, TV Bra for Living Sculpture, 1969. Which he designed to be worn by cello player and collaborator, Charlotte Mormon, while she performed. Pake's Video Flag X, 1985, is another example of video used in sculpture a series of Television screens are arranged in a grid pattern to display an image of the American flag. What is Arte Pavara?
Arte povera, meaning poor art or impoverished art is a movement that emphasized the use of everyday objects and aims to broaden just what can be considered art. The term was invented by Italian artist German Selland in 1967 and is related to similar movements such as art informal. Artists associated with Arte Pavera include Greek artist Janis Kaunelis, 1933, as well as Italians Giulio Paolini, 1940, and Michelangelo Pistoletto, 1933. Pistoletto is famous for his Arte Pavera work, Venus of the Rags, 1967. In which a glimmering sculpture of Venus, the goddess of love, with her back turned to the viewer, is juxtaposed with a large, colorful pile of rags. Kaunalis also contrasts refined classicism with the everyday in his Untitled from 1978, in which fragments of a classical sculpture are held together with cord. Who was Henri Cartier-Bresson? While the FSA photographers focused their attention on rural America, French photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson 1908-2004, documented the Spanish Civil War, 1936-1939, and much of 20th century Europe. Cartier Bresson is considered one of the foremost early photojournalists, which means he communicated the news through pictures, but he was also deeply inspired by surrealism and took seemingly spontaneous snapshots while walking through the streets of Paris. Henri Cartier-Bresson is known for his uncanny ability to remain neutral as a photographer. To maintain a fly-on-the-wall perspective. He also subtly incorporates psychological interest into his work. Making his seemingly simple photographs emotionally and intellectually complex. Can a video game be a work of art? All works of art, but perhaps most obviously installation art. Rely upon the participation of viewer to generate meaning. When you go to a gallery and look the art, your thoughts and experiences affect the meaning of the art you see and interpret. This exchange is naturally extended to the concept of game play and video games. Game theory and game art have been a fruitful source of artistic exploration for years. In 2001, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art exhibited game show and in 2012 the Smithsonian American Art Museum held a show called, The Art of Video Games. The show's curator, Chris Melisinos, explained that through the video game medium, we are invited by the artist to inject our own morality, our own worldview, our own experiences into the game as we play it. And what comes out is wholly different from everybody that experiences it, the art of video games. Like other forms of digital art, video game art is very young. And generations of innovative artists will likely mine the medium for its theoretical and aesthetic potential in the years to come.
Can a video game be a work of art? All works of art, but perhaps most obviously installation art. Rely upon the participation of viewer to generate meaning. When you go to a gallery and look the art. Your thoughts and experiences affect the meaning of the art you see and interpret. This exchange is naturally extended to the concept of game play and video games. Game theory and game art have been a fruitful source of artistic exploration for years. In 2001, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art exhibited Game Show. And in 2012 the Smithsonian American Art Museum held a show called, The Art of Video Games. The show's curator, Chris Melisinos, explained that through the video game medium. We are invited by the artist to inject our own morality, our own worldview, our own experiences into the game as we play it. And what comes out is wholly different from everybody that experiences it, the art of video games. Like other forms of digital art, video game art is very young. And generations of innovative artists will likely mine the medium for its theoretical and aesthetic potential in the years to come. Who are some of the important international artists working today? The contemporary art world is increasingly international in scope and a number of artists from around the world have achieved critical acclaim and success. The following is a short list of some of these artists. Who are some of the important international artists working today? The contemporary art world is increasingly international in scope and a number of artists from around the world have achieved critical acclaim and success. The following is a short list of some of these artists. Who is Mona Hatoum? Mona Hatoum, 1952, is a Palestinian video and installation artist who was raised in Lebanon and works primarily in Britain. Hatoum's conceptual installations and performance pieces often communicate themes of exile and authority. Examples of her work include the minimalist Sokol du Monde, Base of the World, 1992-1993. A large black cube that contrasts a metallic interior structure with a softer, more organic exterior embellishment. Who is Mona Hatoum? Mona Hatoum, 1952, is a Palestinian video and installation. Artist who was raised in Lebanon and works primarily in Britain. Hatoum's conceptual installations and performance pieces often communicate themes of exile and authority. Examples of her work include the minimalist Sokol du Monde, Base of the World, 
1992-1993. A large black cube that contrasts a metallic interior structure with a softer, more organic exterior embellishment. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967, is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hu, 2006, a high tech, monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967 is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hu, 2006, a high-tech, monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. Who is Shirin Neshet? Shirin Neshet, 1957, is an Iranian American photographer and video. Artist whose photographs frequently explore stereotypes of Muslim women. Her later video work, including Tuba, 2002, and Logic of the Birds, 2002, explores spiritual themes through Quranic symbolism and music. Who is Shirin Neshet? Shirin Neshet, 1957, is an Iranian-American photographer and video artist whose photographs frequently explore stereotypes of Muslim women. Her later video work, including Tuba, 2002, and Logic of the Birds. 2002, explores spiritual themes through Quranic symbolism and music. Who is Gabriel Orozco? Gabriel Orozco, 1962, is a Mexican artist from Jalapa, Veracruz, whose work, including sculpture, photographs, and installations, often subtly alters found objects and is intellectually complex. For example, in the early 1990s, Orozco chopped up a Citroën DS automobile and reduced its width by two-thirds making us think differently about commonly perceived objects. Who is Gabriel Orozco?
Gabriel Orozco, 1962, is a Mexican artist from Jalapa, Veracruz, whose work, including sculpture, photographs, and installations, often subtly alters found objects and is intellectually complex. For example, in the early 1990s, Orozco chopped up a Citroën DS automobile and reduced its width by two-thirds. Making us think differently about commonly perceived objects. Who is Yinka Shoni Bear, MBE? Yinka Shona Bear, 1962, is a British Nigerian artist whose work takes many forms, including video, photography, installation, and performance. Some of his most well known work questions racial identity and relationships between cultures in a post colonial world. His sculptural work, Scramble for Africa, 2003. Depicts headless European leaders dressed in European style clothes made with African printed fabrics as they divide up the resources of the continent amongst themselves. He was made a member of the British Empire, MBE, by Britain's Queen Elizabeth II in 2005. Who is Yinka Shoni Bear, MBE? Yinka Shoni Bear, 1962, is a British Nigerian artist whose work takes many forms, including video, photography, installation, and performance. Some of his most well-known work questions racial identity and relationships between cultures in a post-colonial world. His sculptural work, Scramble for Africa, 2003, depicts headless European leaders dressed in European-style clothes made with African printed Fabrics as they divide up the resources of the continent amongst themselves. He was made a member of the British Empire, MBE, by Britain's Queen Elizabeth II in 2005. Who is A.I. Weiwei? Ai Weiwei, 1957, is a Chinese contemporary artist and political activist known for working in a variety of media, including painting, sculpture, and installations. Weiwei, who has shown his work internationally, was arrested by Chinese police in 2011 and detained for tax evasion and has since not been allowed to leave the country or speak publicly about his arrest. A.I. Weiwei's work is often political, contemplative, and humorous. Many of his works, such as his Colored Vases, 2006, series, evoke a sense of emptiness. Who is A.I. Weiwei? A.I. Weiwei, 1957, is a Chinese contemporary artist and political activist known for working in a variety of media, 
including painting, sculpture, and installations. Wei Wei, who has shown his work internationally, was arrested by Chinese police in 2011 and detained for tax evasion. And has since not been allowed to leave the country or speak. Publicly about his arrest. Ai Wei Wei's work is often political, contemplative, and humorous. Many of his works, such as his colored vases, 2006, series, evoke a sense of emptiness. Where can I see art in my area? Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums, which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art by local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe. Which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more. Where can I see art in my area? Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums, which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art by local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe. Which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more. Where I can I find art resources online? There are so many websites about art that looking up art online can turn into information overload. Here are a select few websites with a wealth of information on art. Presented in a straightforward and often entertaining way. Heilbronn Timeline of Art History at the Metropolitan Museum of New York http colon slash slash www.metmuseum.org slash toah this incredibly detailed site combines detailed explanations of art movements and styles with explanations of specific works of art held in the museum's collection it is a great resource for western and non-western art alike if you can't make it to new york Looking at the Met Museum's timeline of art history is
The next best thing. Google Art Project, http colon slash slash www.googleartproject.com A visit to Google Art Project is like stepping into a virtual museum. Roam the halls of the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence, or the Tate Britain in London. Dozens of museums opened their doors to Google in 2011. Allowing cameras to film their interiors in a manner similar to Google Street View. After broadening the project's scope in 2012. Tens of thousands of works of art from around the world can be seen online through the Google Art Project. Smart History presented by the Khan Academy, HTTP slash slash smarthistory.khanacademy.org slash Smart History is a great place to learn more about art movements and specific works of art. The site provides written essays, and video and audio guides to some of the most famous paintings. Sculptures and works of architecture around the world. Recently, Smart History has made an effort to include non-Western art. Smart History multimedia presentations are engaging and highly informative. Where I can I find art resources online? There are so many websites about art that looking up art online can turn into information overload. Here are a select few websites with a wealth of information on art. Presented in a straightforward and often entertaining way. Heilbronn Timeline of Art History at the Metropolitan Museum of New York http colon slash slash www.metmuseum.org slash toah this incredibly detailed site combines detailed explanations of art movements and styles with explanations of specific works of art held in the museum's collection it is a great resource for western and non-western art alike if you can't make it to new york Looking at the Met Museum's timeline of art history is the next best thing. Google Art Project, http colon slash slash www.googleartproject.com A visit to Google Art Project is like stepping into a virtual museum. Roam the halls of the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence, or the Tate Britain in London. Dozens of museums opened their doors to Google in 2011. Allowing cameras to film their interiors in a manner similar to Google Street View. After broadening the project's scope in 2012. Tens of thousands of works of art from around the world can be seen online through the Google Art Project. Smart History presented by the Khan Academy, http slash slash smarthistory.khanacademy.org slash Smart History is a great place to learn more about art movements and specific works of art. The site provides written essays, and video and audio guides to some of the most famous paintings, sculptures, and works of architecture around the world. Recently, Smart History has made an effort to include non-Western art. Smart History multimedia presentations are engaging and highly informative.
Are there any good documentaries about art? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of documentaries about art and artists. One of the best recent documentaries is Simon Shama's Power of Art, 2006, series. Which does an excellent, and very entertaining, job of explaining the work of famous artists throughout history from the Renaissance to the 20th century. The PBS series Art, 21 is unparalleled in its presentation of art in the 21st century. Each episode of Art, 21, which is organized by theme, provides a look into the minds, and usually the studios, of artists working today. For a mix of Western and non-Western art, the series Art Through Time. A global view is also presented thematically, and includes information from art historians from around the world. It is often shown on local PBS stations. Check your local listings. Are there any good documentaries about art? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of documentaries about art and artists. One of the best recent documentaries is Simon Shama's Power of Art, 2006, series. Which does an excellent, and very entertaining, job of explaining the work of famous artists throughout history from the Renaissance to the 20th century. The PBS series Art, 21 is unparalleled in its presentation of art in the 21st century. Each episode of Art, 21, which is organized by theme, provides a look into the minds, and usually the studios, of artists working today. For a mix of Western and non-Western art, the series Art Through Time. A global view is also presented thematically, and includes information from art historians from around the world. It is often shown on local PBS stations. Check your local listings.